Hello and welcome to the very first Progress Wrestling Hype Show of 2023. Um, and what a fantastic hype show this is going to be, looking at start spreading the news. Whenever I hear that, I just want to break into song. Start uh, singing, I'm joined, as it. always, <laughs> by my good friend, my co-host, Mr. Mad Dog, Mike Angus. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, did you have a good Christmas and a happy new year to you? I certainly did, my mate. Yeah, we were very busy. Uh, obviously, uh, great Christmas with the family and everything. And then uh, we had unboxing just before New Year's. So what an amazing time we had at the Electric Ballroom in Camden Town with all the Progress Faithful there. And uh, it was a show packed full of surprises, as we thought it might be. Yeah. Um, there was all sorts of stuff going on, John. As I know you were in attendance. What an amazing show to wrap up 2022. And uh, a big Happy New Year from the Mad Dog and everyone here at Progress HQ to all our fans and uh, everyone watching today. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are here to discuss, to break down uh, the card that is now set for start spreading the news. And it's going to be on Sunday, the 22nd of January, 3 p.m. It's new kickoff time, of course. Um, and uh, of course, if you haven't already got your tickets, it's not too late. There are still tickets available. All you got to do is follow the instructions down at the bottom of the screen um, and go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. It will transport you to the Dice FM app um, and then just a few clicks away from getting your ticket or tickets to start spreading the news. Uh, Sunday, the 22nd of January. Uh, we talk about, we break down the matches very, very soon. Um, and of course, this is what we're going to be talking about. Start spreading. The, no, I, I can't sing. Good, I'm not, good, this isn't good, Lana. Good, this good, isn't good. Lana Oki. It's not even John Ozoki. <laughs> um, but uh, there we go. There's all the details. Progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets for the first chapter show of 2023, chapter 148. But Mike, as you said, we, we capped off um, a, a marvellous 2022 for Progress Wrestling, um, December the 30th, in the Electric Ballroom, the spiritual home of Progress Wrestling. You was there, I was there, a fantastic array of matches. It was a packed house as well. Um, so many surprises that came through that curtain uh, that Friday um, afternoon in the ballroom. We're going to go through some highlights now uh, because it's not dropped yet on demand or uh, on, on the network and it will do very, very soon. But just to kind of whet the appetite. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it, it was a fantastic show. And, and it, of course, I mean, how could we forget our host, Simon Miller? Um, Simon the Elf. <laughs> Simon the <laughs> That's right. And then, of course, the first match. Um, of the show was CPF seeing the returning Joe Lando, of course, with Callum Newman, Dan Danny Black, Maverick Mayhew, and of course, uh, up against Luke Jacobs, Driller, Dan Maloney, um, a man like Del Boy. Um, and uh, like I say, of course, we know that uh, Malik Darius was behind that costume if you haven't figured it out. Um, <laughs> and uh, their final tag team partner was, of course, Mad Kurt making his progress wrestling debut. And it was a fantastic show. So many highlights, so many uh, uh, I say high spots as well, as you would expect from these guys. But um, like I say, that was a hell of a way to kick off unboxing and uh, some, some surprises in that first match alone, Mike. Yeah, it was amazing. And I was, uh, you know, when man like Del Boy hit in the electric ballroom, I could hear, you know, there was there was laughter, there was cheers. It was one of my uh, favourite moments of the year, to be fair. And of course, uh, the surprise of uh, Mad Kurt making his progress debut. I've obviously uh, seen Mad Kurt wrestle all around the UK and, uh, you know, what a, what a great banter he brings and uh, I just thought it was great to see like some di different tag teams and different people teaming he wouldn't normally get a team together Luke Jacobs coming out and doing the driller pose on the stage you know all this, seeing stuff like that's just awesome you know you might not get that at a normal show but an unboxing you never know what's going to happen and uh, obviously there were some really special moments uh, I love the fact that Mad Kurt was getting himself into trouble constantly throughout the match he uh, managed to send a fan into the ring dressed as him at some point he, uh, you know, he, he did get switching music by all four of CPF at the same time. And, uh, you know, it was just chaos. And it was, uh, that's how I like to start a show. <laughs> always <laughs> always nice and exciting. And there was Absolutely. some high flying action. There was some stuff you don't always see out of the guys. And, uh, 
You know, it was absolutely brilliant. What a way to start the show. And the fact that man like Del Boy can still smoke his cigar while he's punching <laughs> out Joe Lando's lights is... That's uh, a great picture. Look at that. Pretty special, you know. <laughs> absolutely. We've actually got uh, one or two highlights from that match, Mike. Uh, we do like highlights on the uh, Progress uh, Hype Show. And uh, let's have a quick look now because uh, you won't be disappointed. And this is, as I said, to, to whet your appetites and give you a bit of a flavour as to uh, what happened in that extraordinary unboxing match. <laughs> Uh-oh. Where's Matt this going? This is an ominous sound now. Don't he's encourage not, him. He's not looking for a Matt the Hug and Kiss, but he goes high. Oh, it takes down. Wow. Del Boy and Luke. And Tony Black goes up. Oh, got caught. What the? Got caught. What got caught. The? What is this? Is that? Oh, oh. Hurricane from the heavens. He's amazing. Here comes Callum. And Danny goes up. No. Where's Danny Black going? So walks oh the tyro God. all the way to the middle. No! Huge oh moonsault! Gosh! Callum was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Jeez. I get the feeling. He Callum, was there for support. Callum's going to want to top this, so I get the oh, feeling. Oh, no, no, no. Think of the children. Off the ropes. Oh, oh! Diamond Corkscrew from Callum Newman! There we go. Some uh, amazing uh, athletic action there from uh, CPF um, in that opening match of unboxing. And uh, I'd say that'll be dropping very soon on demand and, of course, on the WWE Network. Um, but I do have another clip from that from that match as well. And uh, uh, I'd say this is from uh, Man Like Del Boy uh, in the future, or in the past. Um, and, of course, we know that uh, Doritz loves to sell merch. Uh, we all know that. Um, he's been known to sell a T-shirt or two, hasn't he, Mad Dog? Um, and just, just look at this uh, bit of fun that happens during that match. Up to right now, goes up high. Oh! Gosh! Flies in, takes out all of CPF. And like Luke Jacobs and Mad Kurt just chilling by the ring post. They're God just... bless. They're just trying to... What? This is an automated video message to come on the screen with everyone in the match is down. What are you going to do? I'll be back, I'll be back. My right is very close, it's available. At the right of the school, in the interval, and at the end of the show, make sure you get it up. But the new, the new we've had before, Felicia, so make sure you don't get that. And also, remember, don't say no one. He's 81. Oh, one! Two, one! Oh, one! Two, one! I hope you want to say two, one. This is going to be so nice. So, I think everyone's getting back home now, so. Wow! <laughs> what? I don't know about you, Mike, but um, uh, I, I think man like Dalboy. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, man like Delboy needs to be a, a regular character on progress shows. Um, and I think just every so often to mix things up, uh, man like Delboy has to come out. It's got to be a, reg it's gotta be a regular character. <laughs> well, exactly. I'm just looking, wondering who's going to be Rodney and Uncle Albert, to be honest, but we'll have to, we'll soon find out. <laughs> well, here he is if, now. I, if I get a beard, a beard, do you reckon I could be Uncle Albert? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That was a, a cameo there from Lee Hi, from Lee. There. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, but, Lee uh, McAteer there. Big shout out, Lee. <laughs> it, it, it could be like the three faces of Foley, but the, the two faces of Doris. And, you know, there we go. There we go. Let's talk about match number two. And, of course, it was uh, Maggot and uh, Charles Crowley. Now, these two have faced um, before in a progress ring. Um, and uh, like I say, they faced again um, in a, a rematch of epic proportions with uh, Crowley and his new godlike persona. Um, and this match uh, did not disappoint, as you would expect, from two of the, the biggest characters and two of the best wrestlers on the scene at the moment. Um, but uh, an absolutely fantastic match there. We do have a little bit of a, um, a, a clip from that match to play in a moment. But, uh, Mike, I, I'd love your thoughts on that one because... Once again, Maggot has become a, a, a progress fan favourite uh, in 2022, and I'm sure you will continue to be a crowd favourite going into 2023. Uh, Crowley has been on this this journey. Uh, we saw what happened between him and Elijah um, a couple of months back, um, and uh, like I say, it circled back to Maggot, and uh, the two of them dis did did not disappoint. 
Hey, mate, they're amazing, as always. And uh, you know what? Crowley has metamorphosized into this god character now, and it's... Uh, you know, it can only spell trouble for everyone in the Progress locker room in 2023. Maggot, of course, from uh, WXW Germany. What a brilliant wrestler. He's been embraced by the Electric Ballroom fans. And as soon as that music hits and he heads down the ramp, you know, everybody is involved. And Maggot, such such a great wrestler. Somebody, you know, who we're going to have to watch out for as well in 2023. But uh, Crowley, uh, first time I think I've seen him bring his, uh, his monkey to the ring with him. He had Sebastian with him at this show. And... Um, and he did pick up the victory in this one, Jonas. And I tell you what, I did message Crowley earlier because I had to ask him, what do you call that finisher? And uh, he messaged me back and told me that it's called the F69. So uh, <laughs> bear that in mind when you get to watch this match back because, uh, you know, it's one you've got to check out. And uh, amazing new biblical music from Charles Crowley and a new outfit and everything. He was ready for unboxing. And uh, I can only, uh, after that promo he cut after the match, I can only be concerned about what's to come in 2023 from the uh, the spectacular one. Absolutely. And, and the reaction after the match from the Progress fans inside the ballroom was has to be seen to be believed and i know that we we hype up these matches a lot a lot and and uh you know all the hyperbole but you really got to watch it on demand and the wwe network to see with your own eyes what we're referring to um the reaction after that match was absolutely fantastic but i did promise a little clip from that match um and here we go you should hug it out oh we've been here before is it time oh. to is it time oh. to dance that dance again He says no, pulls him in up on the shoulders. Goes up, oh look at this, Gorilla Press over his head. The strength of Charles Crowley right now. Oh, and just dumps him down. <laughs> oh wait, 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 I think we know where Crowley's going. This is a big ring, Charles. Uh oh, wait, wait a, a minute. Weird minds think alike? Some wonderful uh, Star Wars references throughout that match, just to add to the uh, the entertainment. Um, but uh, a lot of fun there. You've got to catch out when it drops on demand or on the WWE Network. Um, Jonas, let me course, tell you something. Go I've got an interesting story for you. For you know, if you want to talk about Star Wars, just briefly, uh, we were doing the show in Newcastle at the Boiler Shop as part of the Deadly Viper tour, and uh, before the show. I always include in the uh, the music list that we play before the show, I always throw in the Seagulls song, you know, the one way that Yoda singing. I always put that in before the show because it's one of uh, SoCal Val's favorite songs. <laughs> and I glanced around and, and I saw backstage SoCal Val dancing to it, but Maggot was with her dancing backstage in Newcastle, oh, wow. dancing to Seagulls. <laughs> there, there's so got to totally be some video footage of that, surely, but uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Very special moment for me, that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and then the next unboxing match um, was was meant to be uh, Lizzie Evo versus Alexis Falcon. Um, but uh, we had a, a, an appearance from the lovely Nina Samuels um, doing her usual shenanigans, as we would expect from uh, from a character such as uh, Nina. And the match very soon, uh, very quickly got turned into a three-way, didn't it, Mike, uh, with uh, Alexis Falcon, Lizzie Evo, Nina Samuels. And uh, this was a great match between three premier performers, premier female talent on the UK European, a worldwide scene, let's be honest. Um, and uh, this match did not disappoint. Um, a fantastic match, as you would expect with these three individuals, Mike. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, Alexis Falcon seemingly locked in her changing room before the match, probably by Nina Samuels, who interrupted mm. their entrance, came out and decided she was going to fight instead of Alexis. But then, thankfully, just before the match begins, uh, Alexis manages to escape from the change room and makes it down to that match. And the animosity between Nina Samuels and Alexis Falcon was boiling over and it was enough to uh, 
give Lizzie Evo the distractions she needed in that one. But what a match. And, uh, you know, all three amazing wrestlers. And uh, they put it all on the line here in this one. Great match. Another one that you've definitely got to go back and watch. And um, very proud of Lizzie, obviously, from my neck of the woods. And uh, new gear for this one and uh, a brilliant showing. And uh, the, uh, the problems did continue after the match between uh, Nina Samuels and Alexis Falcon as well, because that wasn't where it ended. There was a, uh, a bit of chatter after the match and then more problems, which uh, Nina Samuels brutally attacked Alexis Falcon after the match, Jonas. So uh, that's definitely something you should go back and check out because uh, Alexis obviously uh, out of action at the moment due to that attack. So. Absolutely. We do have a little clip from that match uh, just to whet the appetite before it drops on demand and on the network. Here we go. Have her hair. She just gets bitchy, for lack right, of a better term. Blocks it. Blocks it. Alexis, that look in her eye. Oh. Big forearm. Oh, here we go. For Falcon Fury, reverse count. Oh, oh. flatliner. Send her right to Lizzie. Oh! Takes it Not down the as money well. maker. Wait a minute. What the heck is One Lizzie leg. going for here? One leg from Alexis. Oh, double single leg Boston Crabs in stereo. Talk about getting a leg up on the competition, there Ollie. There she got two. And now, look at, look at this. Alexis and Alexis and Nina stopping each other from tapping. She's crawling towards the ropes. Ropes, oh. rope break. Lizzie's got to let go. She's got him locked in. Oh, what the heck are they doing? They're in. Oof. I'll tell you what, they're doing everything they can to get Lizzie's grips off of them. Another great uh, triple threat match there to look out for when it drops on demand. And then match number four, Mike, just before the interval, was very interesting. Um, of course, uh, we saw Tate Mayfess. Um, uh, Tate Miss, his greatness, of course, come through the curtain. Um, and of course, he was expecting an opponent uh, in true unboxing style. Uh, nobody knows who you're going to face until that music plays. Um, but um, of course, Tate's had the war of words uh, with ring announcer, host of the show, Simon Miller, of course. And uh, Tate is always furious at Simon for not doing his entrance correctly, not saying the correct words as Tate would like him to. Uh, always refused to do the entrance for Tate. And this has always uh, got the goat of Tate. And they've had kind of, uh, you know, a, a bit of back and forth over the last few shows. Well, Tate's opponent actually turned out to be Mr. Simon Miller. Uh, the angry elf there, and uh, he tore off his costume. And uh, we had match number four, um, and uh, probably to the surprise and dismay of Tate Mayfair's, um, I, I, I think that he had it coming uh, with the war of words that had been happening between the two. And Tate even got on the microphone next to uh, SoCal Val there to uh, basically explain his dismay and his uh, annoyance at what had just happened. And we even saw Simon Miller take to the skies um, as he flew down from the top rope there onto Tate um, and the crew underneath. Um, but an extraordinary moment at unboxing, completely unexpected, took the fans and certainly took Tate Mayfair's by surprise. Uh, but a hell of a moment that we'll be talking about for years. Yeah, I loved how they how, how it ended up uh, coming about, you know, with uh, Tate watching the video up on the screen. And meanwhile, in the background, the elf was disrobing, getting ready to beat the living hell out of Tate Mayfair's. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Simon Miller, he's the uh, perfect host for Progress Wrestling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he is a great wrestler as well. I've seen him wrestle all around the country. And uh, I've ring announced for him before in the past. So uh, uh, also, I've obviously ring announced for Tate a lot of times. But uh, luckily, he's never had to have any sort of altercation with the Mad Dog uh, <laughs> yet. So, um but yeah, great match, and uh, you know Simon really impressive in that one. And uh, Tate Mayfair's up to all his all his normal tricks, uh, causing trouble as usual. Even on the uh, even on the comms desk this time, deciding he's going to do a bit of commentary, uh, almost like the uh, the Rock back in the day. And uh, uh, interestingly, if you check out on Twitter, there is a caption contest open on that picture at the moment. 
I suggested that perhaps Tom Scarborough had uh, hypnotised Tate and then said the word Miller and set him off in his in his trance-like state. But, uh, you know, feel free to dive on the Progress Twitter and add your own caption to that photo. Let us know what you think is happening in that one. <laughs> yeah, Ollie Spring certainly keeping a safe distance there for he sure. Was. But, uh... At the end of the uh, Tate Mayfair's match, uh, Warren Banks did make his return to Progress Wrestling and put Tate Mayfair's in his place there, which was good to see. It's great to have Indeed. Warren Banks back at Progress. What a brilliant wrestler. And he's been injured for a little while, and it looks like he's got a big year coming up in 2023. Um, a, a great match. Another fantastic highlight from unboxing. Um, I certainly remember that one for the way that uh, Simon kind of unveiled himself as the opponent. It had to happen. Unboxing was the perfect place and time for it to happen. Um, and of course, we came into to part two. We had the interview. came to part two. Simon Miller, obviously, taking a bit of a moment to recover from that match, as you would expect. Um, and we had uh, that damn dirty dog, G Money, come out for uh, part two, or certainly the, the very next match. There we go. We had superstar Lana Austin. And we had a bit of Lana Oki to kick things off, Mike. Uh, that, that was always fun. And a, a fan pulled from the, from, the, from the front row to take part in that uh, uh, special edition of Lana Oki. I don't think uh, Lana was too impressed with the, the fans um, uh, offering there. Uh, but uh, maybe not quite to her taste. But Lana certainly enjoyed it. Um, but uh, let's say Lana Oki, always uh, a highlight of any show. And, of course... Um, Alana was uh, not alone. Millie uh, McKenzie came down. Rio came down. And then, of course, Lana Austin experienced member Sky Smitzer was announced as the, the fourth member. Uh, most of the annoyance. I think that was Gene just trying to stare up the pot. You know, well, I'll be honest with you. It certainly and worked. Then. It certainly worked. And it certainly annoyed Lana. And like I say, so many highlights, um, so much great action. Um, and, and of course, with uh, Lana's progress women's championship on the line. Um, and uh, looks like a fantastic match um, that you can watch back on demand and the WWE Network. And uh, like I say, all four of the competitors in that match uh, gave a fantastic performance. Uh, another real highlight uh, from uh, from unboxing from 30th of December last year. Mike, give us your thoughts on that one. It was a cracking match. And uh, like I say, started off with a bit of Lana Roki and uh, finished off with, um, like I say, maybe a little bit of dissension within the experience there certainly was and uh you know interesting they started it off with a bit of a party didn't they setting off uh confetti cannons in the ring and i could see that millie mckenzie was particularly enjoying that when she got down to the ring she was uh having her own little confetti party at the start of the match anytime you've got lana austin millie mckenzie rio and sky smitten in the ring you know you're going to have a great match and this was a uh, this was exactly that and um, definitely want to go and check out and obviously, um, you know, there was some animosity towards the end of that one between some of the uh, between the ranks of the Lana Austin yes. experience. Yes, yes. Um, you've got to kind of stay tuned or uh, buy a ticket uh, to see what happens next. Just go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets um, to be part of the action um, and start spreading the news. We'll be, we'll be talking about start spreading the news very, very soon. And then uh, that led us on to the Progress World Championship match. Spike Trevay, um, the sovereign lord, the vulture of progress, the vulture of British wrestling, and his opponent. I, mean, I think we've talked a lot about loose ends that uh, Spike hadn't quite tied up um, or that hadn't quite been tied up during Spike's reign. And uh, probably the biggest loose end was this man here, um, the, the beast of Belfast, Big Damo. And what a surprise it was for the Sovereign Lord. And, of course, uh, before the match even started, we had a bit of a stare down between two big boys there, Big Damo and, of course, Bullet, uh, the henchman, the bodyguard um, for the Sovereign Lord, of course. But the match itself between Spike and Big Damo was uh, an awesome affair, a fantastic encounter. Um, and Spike, to his credit, he found, you know, some uh, some uh, a way around Big Damo um, by hook or by crook. He did use some, some tactics that... Um, crook and crook. He, he did use some <laughs> tactics uh, that uh, worked um, to his favour to a certain degree. But a very exciting match for those in attendance at the ballroom, Mike. Uh, but uh, Spike Trevay versus Big Damo, another highlight from the show. And uh, Big Damo looking to recapture um, his Progress World Championship. Yeah, and what a, what a title run Spike has had, though. He's been mm. meticulous, as you said, so far. And um, 
you know, Big Damo, the Atlas champion coming out to face the Progress champion. It could have been a double champ, but, uh, you know, it was not to be. It was not to be on this evening, but, uh, you know, Big Damo, he's an absolute monster, the beast at Belfast. And, you know, he uh, he ended up with an altercation with Bullet. Uh, poor Tom Scarborough was getting flung about the place, the referee. There was all sorts going on here. And Bullet is a very dangerous man. You know, Spike's Dark Guardian, he's got there with him. Another tough guy. You can see they're both two massive fellas, Ooh. those two. And, uh, you know, I would love to see a match between Damo and Bullet in the future at some point. I don't, I don't know if it's on the cards, but, uh, you know, that would be, for me, really interesting to see how that one went. And we'd probably have to reinforce the ring for that one. But, um, of course, Spike Trevay up, up to his normal shenanigans and, uh, you know, Bullet... Um, He's the, he was there the whole match, causing trouble. Poor Tom Scarbs took a beating. It was a, it was an interesting interesting night at unboxing and a big demo where you know he lives to fight another day though. Absolutely, absolutely, and that led us nicely to uh, the, the main event, uh, and it was for the Progress Tag Team Championships. And of course, you got uh, the Sunshine Machine uh, going up against. There we go, Eddie Dennis and Mark Andrews, FSU former progress tag team champions and that's either the former progress uh tag team uh belt trophy um shield um but um there we go as the ring introductions were made we knew that it was going to be a fantastic encounter and, and mike 2022 i think what really stands out for me as being a, a collective highlight is the tag team wrestling that took place in, in inside the progress ring in 2022 uh thinking back to super strong style in that triple threat ladder match or the fantastic series that we had uh, between Smoking Aces, um, the 0121, and, and of course Sunshine Machine, and the battles that they have had in the progress ring through 2022. Of course, FSU coming back into the mix. And what a, a perfect way to cap off 2022, to have probably uh, one of the most exciting tag teams in uh, UK wrestling, Sunshine Machine, the Progress Tag Team Champions, taking on, let's like, say, the returning FSU. Um, and what an amazing encounter it was. And the match built and built and built to uh, an amazing crescendo. Uh, and once again, I think that match capped off a fantastic year for progress, capped off a fantastic year for tag team wrestling and uh, capped off a, a fantastic tag team title match. Yeah, honestly, mate, amazing match. It was uh, it was another one of the highlights of the year for me, that one on there. FSU, as soon as they uh, they enter, enter the arena, you know, it was a, the, the excitement had built up because Sunshine Machine came out first and, you know, everyone loves Sunshine Machine and the, and the music hits and everything. The tag champs are in the ring. And when uh, Party Hard hit right there in the uh, electric ballroom, the whole place went wild because they knew what was coming up. And, oh, yeah. you know, Eddie Dennis was showing great strength there. And look at Teeks. He's not happy about that at all. He, he knows he's going for a ride there. Chuck Mambo's probably going to get lobbed as well. But, uh, you know, Mandrews and... Uh, and Eddie Dennis, two absolutely brilliant wrestlers, obviously been on uh, NXT UK for the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, even before that, you know, we'd seen Mandrews all over the place over in uh, Impact Wrestling in the States. I remember watching him uh, win the uh, British boot camp back in the day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, both brilliant traveled wrestlers and obviously Sunshine Machine, what a tag team they are. And um, obviously, if they picked up the win in this one, they'd be the longest reigning progress tag team champions in history as well so uh that was an interesting one you've got to watch it to see what what transpired there but obviously the belts were ringside the shields were ringside it was all going off and uh you know that's one to uh that i can save for you to make sure you check that out and uh and see what happens there on that one absolutely john as i know you'd asked me before the show actually what my uh what my favorite moment uh on unboxing was as well i forgot to tell you earlier but i was going to say one of my absolutely favorite moments that uh that we've not been able to reveal uh previously well prior to this is a uh, man like del boy's uh entrance mm. but uh one of my well, social uh, media team may have been able to uh the social media guru themselves may have been able to sort that out with you so uh if you get a chance to uh show that to your fans that would be a, a pretty special thing to see well, well, I'll tell you what, Mike, uh, before we go any further, let's have a quick look, look at your favourite moment from unboxing right now. That's exciting, though. Yeah, right. I'm very aroused. <laughs> um, 
What? What? What is this? Catchy. Certain this is gonna get cut for copyright, but even I know this is Say Magna Fi, Rookie Street, right? Rookie Street. So, any ideas? Who could this be? So it's gonna be Mon Monge two. four or four. Mon Monge two, Monge Rodney. Two. Monge two. Thought his name was Dave. I'm so here for it. Dave? Thought his name was Dave. Molly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it? No way. Does like a pig in a blanket. Oh, look at this! It matches. Oh, he's got fans sure. worldwide. Plot is that. <laughs> da, 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 Even Joe Lando loves this tune. How could you not? How could you not? He's got them fancy feet. Simon Miller looks bewildered. And it's Max just, one, ladies just, and gentlemen. Just look at this scene right here. We've got CPF, we've got Simon Miller as a elf. Man like Del Boy. Matt Kurt is back in a progress ring. You know what elf stands for, right? MC I'd like to Elf? Yeah. MC MC uh, you'd like DDI to DDI is silent. Yeah. I'd like to fight? Yes. 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 <laughs> but a, a fantastic show a great way to cap off what was a, a wonderful year for progress wrestling a, a year to be proud of um and, but we're looking ahead we're looking forward 2023 is upon us um and uh, this is what we're all here for start spreading the news chapter 148 the 22nd of january 3 p.m from the electric ballroom i'll be there mike's gonna be there and so is SoCal Val, usually behind the commentary desk, sitting next to Ollie Spring. She's going to be hosting uh, the show. So uh, a great addition inside the ring uh, with the microphone um, as our ring announcer, as our host for Start Spreading the News, and a, a very fitting host as well. That's it, mate. SoCal Val, you know, unfortunately, uh, Simon not able to make this show, and SoCal Val, the perfect replacement to step in and uh, and do the show. You know, what a professional SoCal Val is. And uh, I was actually going to mention about Val early because there was one thing we did, uh, you know, miss there, which was the fact that after uh, after the old title match, Gene Money's holding 
his title and the Progress World Championship in the ring. And so Cal Val says on commentary, oh, that's the money shot right there. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Which I thought was an absolutely brilliant piece of commentary. So, uh, you know, Val and Oli and uh, also Hustle earlier in the year last year did an amazing job on commentary for Progress. So, you know, big thanks as always to those guys. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Val hosting in the electric ballroom. I'm sure the Progress faithful will give her a massive ovation and, uh, you know, she'll do an amazing job as all, as she always does. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Start spreading the news. It's on now. There's, uh, you know, 22nd of January, not long to go at all. And there's uh, some big, big, big announcements coming from Progress Wrestling at that show. And what a card that it is lined up. You know, make sure you get your tickets now while you can, because uh, it's going to be a very, very special day in the ballroom on Sunday, January 22nd. And, uh, Jonas, we've got so many matches lined up for this one. Let's it's going to be wild. We? Let's have a look. So uh, the first match we're going to talk about is the youngest in charge to 0.00001% Leon Slater going up against Tate Mayfairs. Now, I'm not going to do the full introduction because I'll probably mess it up. Um, so apologies, <laughs> Tate. Um, but that, you, you've got the finalist there of the Natural Progression Series 8 um, he wasn't natural progression series Tate, unfortunately, but he was one of the finalists against a real standout performer, Leon Slater, who had a, 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 a legitimate breakout year in 2022. He was a relative unknown at the beginning of the year, but featured so well and was in so many amazing matches come the end of the year. He's a contender. He's one to watch for the future. He's not just a breakout star. He is the star. And those two are going to have a, an amazing match um, to kick things off uh, January the 22nd. That's it. He's a, what a year he's had. Skyrocketed. And not just him, but Tate Mayfairs as well. That guy's, you know, come from somebody who was on quite a few shows around the country and, you know, on an XT UK. But then this year, he is just. You know, both of these guys have been amazing. And they did face each other uh, previously in the NPSA tournaments where I think uh, Mayfair's might have got away with a bit of chicanery and picked up a victory there. So I think Leon Slater might have a bit of revenge on his mind there for that one. And, uh, you know, that could go either way. But as well, it could steal the show, that match. You know, both those guys have, have got it in their lockers to, uh, you know, to really take over. So uh, really looking forward to that one. That's going to be an amazing match. And then... Um, you know, Leon's doing brilliantly all over the world. John, as you've said, yeah. fighting for PCW over in the States. And uh, I don't believe uh, this coming week as well, he's got a TNT Extreme Wrestling title shot. So uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how he gets on there as well. I always keep my eye on Leon Slater. And uh, always keep an eye out for Tate Mayfairs because that man is trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I know I like kind of two guys that hit hard and know how to hit hard and don't mind getting hit hard back. What would Simon uh, say? Big men slapping man slapping meat. Man meat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you've got these two guys that will be slapping man meat, slapping each other's, uh, I'm not even going to say it, uh, but Ricky Knight Jr. against Axel T. That sort of show, Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is not. Uh, but uh, these two, and obviously Ricky Knight Jr. won the NPS 8 uh, in 2022. So he's on a high. He's riding a wave of momentum at the moment, Mike. Going up against Axel who had a tremendous 2022. We saw him uh, a number of times inside a progress ring in 2022. Um, and, and these two know how to fight. Yes, they, they know how to get technical as well. And they've got a, a wide, broad range of arsenal um, at their disposal. But I think this one, when it comes down to it, this one's going to be a scrap. And these two are going to put on a fantastic show. Both of these guys can fight and, you know, the, th the thing about RKJ is he's such, such a talented individual and Axel T-shirt has performed at the absolute highest level that you can. And, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm just cannot wait for this one because, it, it, you know, anything could happen in this. And both guys are so tough. Both can be great technical wrestlers. And looking back at some of Axel's other matches he's had, uh, the match against Luke Jacobs that he had was just astronomically good. Banger. And uh, RKJ, you know, just never, never disappoints. Just when you think these guys can't take it to another level, they do something that just absolutely blows your mind. So this one for me is, uh, you know, it's going to be one of the highlights as well. It's could just, be a show uh, stealer. It, it could be. We could say that about every match on this card. Mm. Just, we will have to stop saying that, but uh, it really could be. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Absolutely. Especially with the year that RKJ had uh, putting him in the ring there with a, a ring veteran such as Axel. That's going to be tasty. That really is. Um, how about this one here? We've just spoke about Big Demo uh, in the Progress World Championship match against uh, Spike from Unboxing. He's going to be teaming with the returning Warren Banks against... Uh, is it a man like Del Boy or is it a man like Darice? But uh, Darice and Dan Maloney, the 0121, will be uh, reforming, um, say, previous Progress World Tag Team Champions against Big Demo and the returning Warren Banks. Uh, wow, uh, that's going to be fantastic. Um, but say, four uh, very high caliber performers there in the ring. That's going to be a tremendous match. And of course, Big Demo the current Atlas champion, of course, but uh, as a tag team encounter, everybody knows I'm a huge tag team wrestling fan. Uh, that one's going to be pretty damn tasty. Yeah, I don't think you'd be seeing a man like Del Boy at this one. I think Reese mm. and uh, the super fight soldier Dan Maloney are going to absolutely have their heads screwed on for this one because if they don't, they'll be losing their heads because I tell you what, big demo and Warren Banks, what a tag team that is. Um, Warren coming back from an injury, uh, you know what? I think... He couldn't have picked a better tag partner to work alongside him here. And that match is just going to be, it is going to be a super fight because Darice and Dan Maloney, the 0121, the driller brings it every time. Darice, you know, he's got to have his head in the game for this one because, uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be another fight. And, um, you know, Warren Banks, just, just hoping that he's back from that injury fully. He's rehabbed it right. It, you know, he looked in great shape when he came back in December and he's yeah. got Big Damo in his corner. The beast of Belfast who's going to, uh, you know, the heads are going to roll, I tell you. It's going to be uh, an amazing tag match that. And uh, I, I couldn't pick a winner in that one, to be honest. Could, could go either way as well. It's going to be a tough one. And with, with the progress tag team ranks looking so stacked as it always has been, um, I was waxing lyrical about the, the tag team matches that we saw in the progress ring in 2022. Uh, the winner of that match uh, could very well be lining themselves up for a future championship match. Who knows? Well, but John, speaking uh, of that... Damo has said, Damo has said as well, he is definitely looking to try and add the tag team belts into That's his collection. Right. So uh, that'll be very interesting to see. Well, let's talk about the Progress Tag Team Championship match that's going to be taking place at Chapter 148. Start spreading the news. The champion, the longest reigning Progress Tag Team Champions of all time, Sunshine Machine, will be going up against Lycos Jim. Now, Lycos Jim, um, Kid Lycos, Full Metal Lycos in particular, um, had an amazing 2022. Collectively, as a, as a tandem, as a, as a faction, uh, Lycos Jim uh, had an amazing year and there's been a real thorn in Sunshine Machine's side for many months now, getting inside their head. Um, and of course, we had that match between uh, Full Metal Lycos and uh, Chuck Mambo, where Chuck Mambo uh, had his head shaved uh, and uh, he went full Johnners and uh, he had no hair by the end of it. <laughs> well, um, I never. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never. But um, like I say, that is going to be another tremendous tag team match. And uh, like I say, the con Gonna, the, the wave of momentum from the tag team ranks is sure to continue in that championship match on the 22nd of January. Yeah, well, Sunshine Machine have had some matches for their them tag team championships. I tell you now, they've battled, battled their way through, and uh, this, you know, this one isn't just the uh, the fight, the, the the wolves in the fight. This is, uh, you know, there's mind games being played by Lycos as well. That you know, I've heard rumours that they're looking. Uh, you know, the, uh, wanting to shake hands or something before this one, is it? A makeup or something? Mm. So I don't know what they're, what they're up to there, but we'll have to see when we get to the ballroom on the 22nd. But I know where ever since Lycos, uh, full metal Lycos, had that match against Chris Brooks, I've certainly found a new level of respect for him because that match was absolutely mind-blowing at Return of the Fly at the Dome in Tufnell Park. Uh, if you've not watched that one, that's one to go back and watch right now yeah. because that matchup. Was, was definitely one of my matches of the year. And I tell you what as well, um, Kid Lycos too, he's nowhere, he's not just going to stand about and watch someone have match of the year. He's going to be stepping up this year. And I tell you what, you know, he's a brilliant wrestler. Um, I've seen that guy wrestle since he was about 15 years old. And, uh, you know, always, always puts on a performance. Both tough little shitty wolves. And uh, we'll have to see if uh, Sunshine Machine can hold on to those tag belts in what could be uh, their toughest defence yet. Well, you say that, and I totally agree. And I think that Lycos Jim, they have got inside the head of Sunshine Machine over recent chapters. Um, and uh, like you say, performance-wise in the ring, 
they are up there. They are high calibre. Um, I think all of that combined will lead to a very tough championship defence by Sunshine Machine. But if anybody can do it, Chuck Mambo and TK can. Uh, we shall have to see. And you have to be there. Go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. Get your tickets today um, and you will not miss out on uh, what, what is already shaping up to be a very stacked and exciting card, including that tag team championship match. Uh, let's talk about this one, Mike. Lana Austin defending a Progress Women's World Championship against Session Moth, Martina. Um, and uh, we all know what Martina can offer. We all know what Martina is all about. Um, that is going to be, we talk about tough title defences. That is going to be a tough title defence for Lana Austin, superstar Lana Austin. Um, but uh, the, 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 the big kind of question mark above all of this, uh, the big anomaly um, is, will the Lana Austin experience be there? And what sort of chicanery or shenanigans will there be? No, exactly, exactly. And, you know, there was that bit of dissension at the end of the uh, the last match that they were involved in. And, and I think uh, Lauren Austin would, could definitely do with the uh, Lauren Austin experience ringside for this one, to be honest. But we'll have to see wherever they are. Uh, Session Moth and uh, Lana, I believe, had a bit of a, uh, a falling out in Dubai that I, uh, I uh. of course, she wasn't present for. But uh, there, was, uh, there was certainly some sort of falling out or arguments. I believe it was on... Uh, on a, on a boat or something where Lana was trying to do karaoke and uh, Session was having none of it. Um, so it, it does seem to be some like personal beef between these guys. So, uh, you know, so I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing what goes off on the 22nd because this could be, uh, it could be wild. And, um, you know, Session off, um, she, as far as I know, she, I, I've not seen her hold that many women's championships. And I think she's, uh, you know, it's about time she did. So I think yes. we'll have to, yeah. Mm, very interesting, very interesting. But it's definitely well worth watching. Favorite. Anyway, he's already told me that he's uh, getting the Guinnesses in ready for a celebration that night, so we'll have to see. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Session Moth will be, want to be part of that celebration with her own championship come the end of the night. Uh, let's talk about this one here. We, we mentioned earlier G-Money holding up both champ his championship and the Progress World Championship um, at Unboxing, and he indeed is the number one contender. He'll be taking on Spike Trevay, the Sovereign Lord, the vulture of progress for the Progress World Championship at Start Spreading the News, January the 22nd from the ballroom. And Mike, I'd say Gene Money, he's had his uh, bites at the cherry. He's had his uh, opportunities before and it's just fallen short of the mark. Just fallen short. Probably the most unluckiest man in a progress ring in 2022. Um, he's looking to turn that around in 2023. And I think if anybody deserves to turn it around and possibly walk away with the gold, um, it has to be Gene Money. Uh, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Yeah, interesting one for me, this, because Spike Trevay, everything he's done has been so well thought out. You know, from how he won the championship off Big Damo when he hit Driller with the uh, the glass bottle, how he got rid of Cara Noir from Progress Wrestling. Everything he's done has been well thought out and meticulous. And I think this is a bit slapdash by Spike to give Gene an opportunity because Gene Money on his day can be the top dog. He has, uh, you know, there's been times when he's been so close at Super Strong Style on the final day. He would picked up a knock and, and it made him not be able to make it to the finals there. He was, you know, he was on course for that championship back then. And, you know, he's he's had a little bit of time away to regroup and rethink his strategy. And then for Spike to grant him a title shot, I think that is a huge mistake because on his day, Gene Money can be the Progress World Champion. And, uh, you know, if I was uh, if I was Spike, I would have dodged that bullet as, uh, you know, the best I could. So, uh, you know, I think... Uh, the title will be in jeopardy. And I think uh, Gene Money's even put on Twitter this week at the end of January 22nd, you could see him as the Progress World Champion. Uh, there is Gene with his championship and, of course, with the Progress World Championship. Um, and uh, that That's could be the money shot, mate. <laughs> that could be the picture. That could be the money shot, as SoCalVal quite rightly noted on commentary. That could be the money shot that we will see uh, come the end of the show on January the twenty second. And uh, that is going to be a very, champ. very exciting match. Yeah, Indeed. Gene Money potentially a double champ there. Speaking of Gene Money and Spike Trevay, we know that uh, Gene had some words for Spike. Um, and uh, this dropped on our socials and on YouTube just a couple of days ago. Let's hear what Gene had to say. Are we recording? 
We are. That's lovely. Oh, hey, it's me. It's Gene Money. You know, the most prestigious champion in British wrestling today. And that's nice, isn't it? And what's also nice is you, Spike Trevay. Because, like, you, you said so much before, and you said that Gene Money don't deserve to be in a main event position. And you know what, Spike, you, you're right. Because I know that. And Joe you know knows that Progress know that because I've lost my last three matches here at Progress, and then I didn't get booked for three months, and I got knocked to a mountain during. Now I'm not complaining about that. I know the things of the business, but ah, oh God, it was what you said in the ring tonight, wasn't it? That you've been on every show, you have been consistent, and I would like some of that consistency. I would like what is around your waist and like. It's almost like somebody wanted you to give me a world championship opportunity, isn't it? It's, it's, it's like somebody can poke an insecure bloke enough in the right places to get exactly what he wants. No, I'm not saying you're weak-willed, spiky boy. No, I'm not saying that you're easily to manipulate it, but I just went on my Spotify and it, it said the most played of 2022 is Spike Trevay. The year of the vulture ended with a bite of the dog and a laugh of the crowd. And now Gene's got a championship match. And that's nice, isn't it? Happy 2023, everyone. From your future progress world champion. End tagline. The year of the vulture ended with a bite of the dog and a laugh from the crowd. What a tagline. And uh, I think that sets it up perfectly. I'm uh, certainly uh, uh, salivating over that uh, championship match we're going to see uh, in the ballroom on the 22nd. But we're not done there, Mike. We have this to talk about. Um, the return of the Thunder Bastard. And uh, once again, it's going to be uh, all female-led. And, of course, uh, the rules... Like all good Thunder Bastard matches, two competitors will start the match and a fresh combatant will enter the ring every three minutes. Eliminations uh, will occur via pinfall submission or disqualification and the winner will earn the right to a title match of their choosing any time and any place. Um, and let's talk through the seven combatants then, Mike. Um, and of course, we've got former NXT UK star, uh, one of the premier performers on the UK scene out of South Wales, of course, Danny Luna will be one competing. Of the strongest the women, one of the strongest women about, Jonas. Absolutely. And uh, we spoke a bit about Sky Smithson being involved in that uh, four way match at unboxing. She will be part of Thunderbastard uh, from the Camden Electric Ballroom, of course, on the 22nd. Rio, uh, who was also a fantastic uh, uh, superstar, fantastic part of unboxing last year, will be another entrant into this year's Thunder Bastard. Along with Raven Creed, we've seen Raven Creed many times in a progress ring in 2022. Uh, she'll be looking to make a name for herself by winning the Thunder Bastard uh, on Sunday the 22nd. And of course, Lizzie Evo, um, who had a, a fantastic standout year in 2022, will be looking to make her mark uh, in a progress ring, um, easily one of the premier performers um, in the UK and further afield. And of course, we got uh, former Progress Women's World Champion Kanji will be looking to win the Thunder Bastard for a third time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, not only that, have another shot at the title that she recently lost to Superstar Lana Austin. And the seventh combatant will be Millie McKenzie. Suplex Millie um, and uh, Suplex Millie easily one of the uh, many people's favorites, some might say, Mike. Uh, many people's favorites, but that is a very, very strong lineup. Seven of the very best premier performers um, on progress roster um, or any roster up and down the country. Um, but that is going to be a fantastic and a very exciting Thunder Bastard. Yeah, I wouldn't count any of those ladies out, and anybody could uh, could win that one. There, we've got you know Danny Luna, one of the strongest women that I've ever seen wrestle in the UK. You've got uh, the Scouse Goddess, Liva Bird, Lizzie Evo. You know I, that's that's my pick for the match, Lizzie Evo. To be fair, mm. I think uh, you know it's Lizzie's time to shine, and you know she's uh, she's more than ready. Um, and I think she's got a chance, but as well, you've got people like Kanji. You can't count Kanji out, as you said. It could be a hat trick of winning the Thunder Bastard. That would be that deserves some sort of title on its own, you know. But uh, obviously, Kanji never count Kanji out. Millie McKenzie, this is uh, 
it's going to be it's going to be wild. And obviously Rio as well won the uh, Revelation of Divine Love tournament last year. It's uh, it's such such a, a group of talent there. Sky yeah. Smiths and the Villainess. It's uh, you know, I think my money is on Lizzie Evo just, but it's uh, you know. Anybody, anybody could pick up the win in that one, Jonas. Yeah, I've got to be honest with you. I think this type of match, um, it can be unpredictable and crazy and wild. And I think for that reason, I'm going to go with Raven Creed. Um, and uh, I think Raven Creed, crazy, unpredictable, wild. I think this match is made for a character and a performer such as Raven Creed. But uh, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. And let's just quickly recap. Of course, we've got SoCal Val, who's going to be our host in the ballroom on Sunday the 22nd. Uh, Tate Mayfair's versus Leon Slater is going to be a fantastic match between two of the, the fastest rising young stars on the scene in 2023. Ricky Knight Jr., the NPS 8 champion, going up against Axel Tisha, veteran of the scene, and that's going to be a hard-hitting encounter. Big Damo and Warren Banks teaming up, the returning Warren Banks, of course, going up against former tag team champions, the 0 2 one and then we have the Progress Tag Team Championship match. Current champions and the longest reigning tag team champions of Progress Sunshine Machine going up against, as we said, a real thorn in their side over the last few months. Lycos Jim, that is going to be a terrific encounter. Um, then we've got superstar Lana Austin defending a Progress Women's Championship against Session Moth Martina. That's going to be a fantastic match and uh, interesting to see how that one unfolds. And then, of course, for the Men's World Championship the Progress World Championship, the uh, Vulture of Progress, Spike Trevay defends against that damn dirty dog G money. And as we just said, that uh, women's thunder bastard uh, with the winner of that match will be able to uh, choose a title of their choosing anytime, any place in the future. Very, very interesting. Uh, but it's not just start spreading the news that we have to uh, hype for you, ladies and gentlemen, today. And of course, don't forget, go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets for start spreading the news tickets. And of course, We've got to establish your love. Chapter 149 from Manchester, the O2 Ritz, February the 12th. Tickets are also available for that. And of course, we've got the wonderful Ali Catch that will be, uh, has already been announced. Uh, and we'll face the winner of uh, Lana Rostin and Session Moth Martina from Chapter 148. So the match we just uh, mentioned, of course, Ali Catch uh, will be waiting in the wings and we'll have a shot at the winner, whoever is the Progress Women's Championship in Manchester on the 12th of February. Yeah, Ali Catch, one half a bus. He obviously has done amazingly last year as well. And, uh, you know, we saw Ali uh, wrestle in Liverpool for the TNT mm. GCW Weekender. And also she uh, wrestled at Progress Wrestling. And, um, you know, that, whoever wins at Session Moth and Lana Austin has got a tough challenge on, on the hands, you know, almost, what, three weeks later. Uh, you know, that could be, uh, you know, would they have recovered from that match, first of all? And then they're going against one of the best in the world. It's, uh, you know, that's going to be massive. And, uh, you know, if you're up north, uh, live near Manchester or, you know, even like Leeds, Liverpool, you can easily get to Manchester. Get yourself across. Make sure you come and see that just before Valentine's Day. And, uh, you know, you could be in for a bit of a Valentine's Day treat there with uh, Ali Catch taking on the winner of that one. It could be uh, a new women's champion right there in Manchester at the O2 Ritz on that day. So interesting stuff. Absolutely. And then back to the ballroom, February the 26th. Tickets are available already. Progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets for chapter 150 when the man comes around. And we mentioned Axel earlier. He'll be taking on RKJ at start spreading the news on the 22nd of January. But he's going to be taking on um, uh, the very tough very credible, very technical Mike Bird. And that is going to be a fantastic match against uh, another veteran of the scene. Uh, any thoughts on that one, Mike? I think Axel Tisha has said to somebody backstage at a show, give me the toughest guys in the UK to fight and I'll fight them. And they've given him RKJ and Mike Bird. And he's <laughs> he's probably going to be regretting it by, the, by February 26th. <laughs> <laughs> oh. but, uh, yeah, Axel Tisha, absolute pro. And, uh, you know, what an athlete, uh, you know, if anyone could, uh, you know, do well in those matches, it's him. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, he's certainly uh, got two very tough matches coming up in, in over the course of the next two months there. So, uh, yeah, Absolutely. I can't wait to see them both. And uh, Axel, as we said, ne never disappoints. 
uh, you know, and it always goes to that next level just when you think they can't possibly do anything more exciting or innovative and suddenly he'll do something you'll be like, what the hell? But that is, uh, you know, what a true pro can deliver. And Axel T-shirt is certainly that. So uh, Mike Baird yeah. is uh, a tough, another tough match for him, though. <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, Callum Newman finally, finally gets his match with Nick Wayne. Uh, didn't quite happen when Nick Wayne was over in the UK the last time. Uh, but Mike, uh, th this this match alone uh, should and deserves to sell out the ballroom alone. What you're going to see between these two young stars um, is going to be absolutely phenomenal, off the charts. And uh, yeah, hold on to your hats, hold on to your seats, because the ballroom won't be the same after this one. Certainly not. The Prince of Pace, uh, you know, he already showed it in that last uh, Fatal 4-Way match and unboxing the speed of him running, even just running the ropes. You know, the guy's uh, no, no. absolutely wild talents and obviously Nick Wayne over last year and only last week did we see Nick Wayne on AEW screens uh, yeah. shaking hands with Darby Allen and saying you know when he turns 18 he's, he's come over that TNT title and uh, you know we had his photograph with Sting and Darby in the AEW ring so we all know Nick is destined for great things but before that he's uh, he is going to take on the Prince of Pace Callum Newman and Callum is not going to get you know, he's not going to want to get murked off on his own territory. So, uh, you know, CPF will be there supporting him, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, Callum Newman versus Nick Wayne, you know, it's an early contender for match of the year straight away. And, uh, you know, these two guys, they, they, they know no bounds. And uh, Nick Wayne, a shooting star, and Callum Newman, our very own UK star, uh, you know, this anything, anything could happen there. And uh, I just can't wait for that one. It's chapter 150 as well. So it's going to be yeah. such a special show. February 26th, back in the ballroom. Can't wait. And we've got, uh, you know, we've got another busy couple of months, Jonas, and uh, I'm just looking forward to it all. There's some, Absolutely. Uh, we've got one more match just to briefly cover off. It was hot off the press, Mike, oh, wow. hot off the press. Um, and uh, Alexis Falcon has an opportunity to get her own back on uh, Nina Samuels after what happened at Unboxing, of course. Nina Samuels, Nina Samuels versus Alexis Falcon at the ballroom on the 26th of February. Uh, that's going to be a pretty heated grudge match between those two. I would say so. It almost boiled over at unboxing. It's, uh, there's been all sorts of incidents, you know, in, in between. And uh, Nina versus Alexis, that, that, is that going to settle the score or is that what we're doing? Now? It's going to be, uh, you know, it, it's going to be mad. And I think, uh, you know, I don't know if the ring can contain them too we'll have to cool. see that's it well we've uh, Ali Catch already been announced for Manchester and those three matches uh, already been announced for uh, the February show back at the ballroom uh, when the man comes around I'm going to say it again I am the hype man Get your tickets now. Progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets is where you need to go now. The link will be in the description to this show. Do yourself a favor. Click on that. Get your tickets to start spreading the news. Then get your tickets uh, for the February show up in Manchester. Then get your tickets for when the man comes around. Chapter 150. Very big, special, momentous uh, show for progress um, back in the ballroom the 26th of February. And you're going to want to be there for uh, Chapter 150. You're going to want to be there for all them shows because we've just mentioned a few matches. The whole card is going to be stacked. And so many, as Mike said, so many amazing announcements that's going to be made over the coming weeks um, that's going to really, really pull you into those shows. But uh, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that misses out. Um, but uh, Mike, it's been an honour. It's been a pleasure hosting this hype show. The first hype show of 2023 with you. Uh, we spoke uh, about uh, what a fantastic unboxing show it was at the back end of December last year and that will be dropping soon on the network and on demand we've hyped up the seven matches that have been announced for start spreading the news the 22nd of January from the Electric Ballroom 3pm kickoff an amazing show um, and uh, I'll take 2023 is going to be a tremendous year, a, a barnstormer of a year for progress. Um, and I think it's going to top what you guys did in 2022. But uh, Mike, it's been a pleasure as always. And uh, like I say, we'll be doing this again soon uh, for many more hype shows. But from myself and from Mad Dog, um, have yourself a good week. Thanks so much, everybody. There's so much to come from progress in 2023. If you haven't got your tickets yet, get them now. You're not going to want to miss this.